Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. I am so excited to be here today on the Trinity Stamps channel for day one of our sneak peek week. Our March 2023 release is just around the corner. And today I get to show you two new things while I make this cute Easter slimline card. The first one is this slimline layered eggs stencil set. Now this is gonna give me the look of a row of eggs leaning up against each other and there's masks to go with it, which I absolutely love. This is the masks that I'm showing you here, and you can use these so that you can ink blend around your stenciled eggs. And I'm gonna show you how that works in a minute, but first I wanna show you the stamp set that I'm gonna to use today. This is a brand new Easter set, it's Vintage Bunny, and you can see it's a two-piece stamp set with a coordinating two-piece die set, the size is four by three, and it is really cute. If you love vintage things, you're going to love this little bunny. And it inspired me to create a card with a very vintage feel today. So here I am stamping out that little bunny, and he is so cute in his little suit. I'm gonna color this out with some Copic markers. I'm using E55 as my darkest color. So this is where I'm adding in all of those shadowed areas. And then I will blend that out with my mid-tone marker, which is E55. 53 and I'm leaving a little bit more space because I am going to bring in one more marker that's much lighter. So that will be my lightest color and fill in most of his face and that is E21 you can see here. So just blending that out and finishing up the coloring of the bunny. Now let's move on to coloring out his cute little suit. My darkest color here is BG72, and I'm putting this in everywhere I want the shadows to be, and I what I was going for on today's card was a more soft, almost pastel color palette with kind of a dusty vibe to it. So I hope that comes across in his suit here, um, but also I wanted it to feel really springy and fun too. So for his vest, I have YG03. I love this color. The lightest color I'm using here, YG01, did brighten it up a little bit, but I still feel it has that really fun vintage Easter vibe. So for his bow tie, I have RV11 as my lightest color, and then my darkest color, I'm just touching down a little bit of shadow there, was R83. I used those same two markers again to color out his nose, his cheeks a little bit, and of course the inside of his ears, and that really adds to an Easter egg feel. I think when you add a little pink to the bunny. All right, for the white areas, I just did a little touch of W0 for some shadowing on his teeth and his shirt. For the basket, I did the same exact colors I used on the bunny, but went a lot more heavy handed with that E55, the darkest color, and then brought in my mid-tone marker, the E53, and I never used a third color on that one. So that really gives me that kind of wicker feel in the basket. And then for the eggs, I only used one color, no shadowing, on the eggs in the basket. Now for the egg he's holding, I used one color of pink for the spots and then the both of the green colors for the egg. There was more room there to do a little bit of shadowing. So here are all the markers I used in case you love this color combination and want to replicate it yourself. All right, time to die cut all the things. So I have the coordinating dies and here you can see what they look like die cut out and how that die bubble cuts around the sentiment Easter greetings, which you could use on so many things. Okay, now it's time to stencil. I'm gonna start with the solid eggs on this stencil. There is a line across the, or down the middle of the stencil, which I use to line up with the edge of my paper to get it nice and straight. And then I am bringing in some tattered rows and using this as my first color. Now you could do all of these eggs different colors. They're separated and far enough apart. It'd be really easy to do different colors and like a whole rainbow of eggs. That would be so fun. Um, I am using this as a background, not so much a focal point on my card. So I decided to go with just two colors. I really laid down that um, oxide ink so that I could splatter it with water because I love that look on eggs and I thought it would be a fun way to dress them up. So there you can see what they look like with the water splattered on them and then I heat set that before moving on to my other color, like just letting it dry a little bit. You can see here it's very easy to line up the eggs that I already stenciled and that's because 
there are etched lines in this stencil that allow you to easily do that. So now I have my speckled egg. Of course I had to use this color <laughs> for my second layer of the eggs. And because the way the stencil is made, it's already masking off those other eggs for me. So it's easy to create this row of eggs and you could adapt this to fit on any size card. Uh, but I love that it is the biggest size so that you have those options to make it smaller if you would like. So I splattered those with water as well, picked up the excess water with with my paper towel and now let's see what it looks like the whole row of eggs so cool all right now i'm bringing in those masks and i'm laying them down over the eggs and i'm not using any adhesive just yet i thought i would lay all of them down in a row make sure they're lined up nicely and then i brought in a long piece of blue painter's tape and I stuck it down to my pants like three times to make it a little less tacky and then I just put it over that whole row. Then I can come in with my antique linen and do a little dusting of color all the way around this card. Now I know I can't access the edges of the card using this method but since I'm just doing a light dusting around the edge and over only only overlapping the eggs a little bit, what I decided to do was just pick up the tape on the end and add that ink in very lightly, very carefully, and this method worked so well for me. Check it out. But I decided to stick it back down so I could splatter over the top. I'm using Vintage Photo, this time just Distress Ink, and I spritzed that with a little bit of water after smooshing the ink pad onto my clear window sheet here. And then I use a scraggly little paintbrush and just drag it along the edge of that window sheet to give me a nice fine splatter. Now you can save the eggs right here on this piece of tape and stick it to your packaging if you wanted. Next, I have some white paint. I'm gonna really focus on splattering this mostly on the eggs, but if it gets off onto the background, it's no big deal. I really like the look of the water splatter on the eggs and then the white paint over the top. It makes me so happy. All right. I'm gonna build on this background even more by using this slimline die, also from Trinity Stamps. It's um, an oldie, but a goodie. And I cut it from some textured cardstock because I feel that adds to the vintage vibe. And then once I laid it on top of my background, I realized I needed to like dust this up a little bit with that vintage photo ink. So it also had a little bit of a shabby vibe to it. I love the shabby chic look for things that are vintage. So I'm gonna glue this in place. I have my glue tube here and I dotted some on the back of the leaves and went around the edge of the frame and glued the two together. So I have that set aside while I work on my sentiment also was a little stark white. So it got a dusting of vintage photo as well. Once that was done, I was ready to add the images to my card. So I layered both of them with some foam squares so I could pop them up and it looks like the bunnies running across the card. It's so cute. And then I've got a place for my sentiment as well. I brought back that foliage frame die set and pulled out some of the flowers and I die cut this all of these pieces two times from white cardstock. Then I just went around the card, laid out the flowers how I thought they might look good, focusing on the four corners. And then once I had those where I wanted them, I went in with my tweezers and my glue and set to gluing everything in place. And I think having the flowers in the corners really helps draw your eye into the center of the card. And I know these look really stark white right now, but I'm gonna play with that, so don't worry. Next, I added the centers to the flowers. Here's what they look like before I added some color. I brought back my Copic markers and used my same pink color combination, RV11 and R83, to add color to the center of the flowers, keeping them really um, matchy matchy. I just thought one color was enough for these. And then just to add a shadow to the flowers, I brought in my E21 marker and added little um, little lines of color just to give them a shadow there. And I felt like that really helped um, mute down the whiteness of them a little bit. Then I took my white gel pen and added some white highlights to all the things. I added this to a white card base that is eight and three fourths by seven and a half, scored at three and three fourths. So I have a white border around my frame. That die cut frame is eight and a half by three and a half, and this will still fit into a business sized envelope. So there is my vintage themed Easter card featuring new products that will be available in our shop 
on March 2nd. So mark your calendars and stay tuned this week because we have a week full of sneak peeks just for you on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. I'll see you all very soon on my next video. Happy stamping. Bye.